I'll be reacting to Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 43, and I will be starting my reaction in 1-0 go. I'm pumped up for this. I always think Kako Kak has a sweet voice. Hell yeah! Although I wonder if... No, go on, that bitch is gonna extend way more beyond that, though. <laughs> oh, man. If Kako is, like, the, um... Commentator for all the matches? That would be fantastic. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Just something about this song kicks so much ass. Especially like the tuning like poses that Gokuto and his friends do. <laughs> First few times I watched it, I was like, alright, it's cute. But now that as, um, I get to watch much more episodes, and I got to know at least more of the characters, it, it's the opening's grown on me when it comes to the visuals. Because the song itself, I always liked it. I always thought it sounded pretty darn cool. Yeah. Especially like the angelic voices in the opening. You can definitely tell the singers put their own to it. Dun rush, go rush. Oh yeah. Na 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 rush na na rush na 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 rush na na rush na 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 It's so darn addicting. All right, now it's here. Hell yeah. Oh, they're gonna actually figure out the throwing? <laughs> Man, that'd be awesome. Cause yeah, um, you all looks really serious there. Honestly, all those other teams are gonna be irrelevant. I don't even know why they bother showing them, especially the space operations trio. They're absolutely pointless. That specific group. I got it, Russia looks like an adorable. Whoa! <laughs> I mean, I gotta admit, though, Seven Tron is cute. I ain't gonna lie. But then, who would be eliminated in the. Yeah, it's only three per group, though. That's what Luke has to consider. Um, but if he does that, someone else will be leaving. Oh, yo, that guy looks filled with urge. I wonder if that's Otis. Or it could be someone else entirely different. That's what I'm thinking Go should have done in the first place. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could get this Blondie's reasoning. How does he able to understand just by those evils? Ha ha ha! What the fuck? Huh. Oh. Huh. Okay, at least here we see Roman actually still practice proper field. Well, oh! <laughs> we actually figured it out. <laughs> I love the paranoia. Mmm. Uh. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, the other one looks it looks similar, but it looks too colorful to be Yuga's plans though. Huh? I thought that might became overly dramatic. <laughs> oh shit! Talk about being caught from behind the cookie jar. Ah, oh. hopefully Kako can save um save her ass. <laughs> I doubt really that. Oh, never mind. Save by the bell. It's a good thing. It looks a dumbass. Why would they accept the name? I'm surprised Romine and Gok don't accept this. Oh, so they didn't know about the name then. Ah, <laughs> son of a bitch! Yuga? I mean, yeah, they can team up with their boy. Yuga? Yuga. It's fucking obvious. Have them join their team. I can't understand why Luke is hesitating, but... They finally thought of a good plan! I was uh, surprised that... Romine or Gokto weren't gonna um, think of that plan. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> yes! And it's fun, I mean, shit. Yugo's proving his worth because he did beat their leader before. He might as well go for it. <laughs> Fuck! They gotta go with the flood and all this momentum? Peer pressure, no! Motherfucker, play the card again now! Oh, okay, I was right, I was honest. It's been a while since they've shown him off, though. Shit. Man, I'm actually um, kind of glad because I was thinking, wait, did they forget about Otis? Oh, uh, no, the dude's in the flesh. I like how the pitch is going to test out that theory. <laughs> I wonder if he called Luke a dumbass. I like how I just back the fuck away. That's a good ass question. Talk about being overly extravagant. Hmm. Oh shit. Yeah, I mean, of course I'd be pumped up. I'd be similarly pumped up, too, if I was able to take on someone like Otis. Shit. Because he'd be able to find out a lot of answers, too. Yo, that shot is cool. Seeing them both stare off at each other like that. Oh, summon Skull! <laughs> yes! I remember I used to have that card. When I had my Yuga cards, but then I lost the wall. It's because I moved so many times that I've misplaced some of my Yu-Gi-Oh and also Pokemon cards. I feel so sad. I had a badass deck. I had Summon Skull. Well, at least back in the day it was badass. Summon Skull, Black Magician, Blue Eyes White Dragon. Yes! It looks beautiful, actually. Yeah, because in the original Yugo when the Sun Skull was summoned, it was just like a still drawing with some movement on occasions when it attacked.
<laughs> he was, yo, he looked like he was capable of sucking the dude's dick there for a bit. Um, when I was going to summon, um... Because some of those cards that he's using reminds me of some of the cards that Yugi would use. I wonder if he's going to use anything like a Black Magician or a Dark Magician girl. Whoa! I mean, Otis just got lucky with his draws! <laughs> the fuck? Hell yeah! Huh. Hmm. Gotta admit, the moss. Samurai Tour always looks cute as hell. Aww. <laughs> Damn, uh, some of those kids got a bit too excited there. <laughs> Shit. I wouldn't be surprised if some of them uh, went through puberty there at that singular instant in time with some of those screaming. <laughs> Damn, you ain't fucking around. Although we summon some run magicians, so I'm gonna assume that he's gonna do some damage against Otis, but then afterwards, his some magicians rather than the other, his monster monster's gonna be destroyed. I like how you have exposition there, because in having the cards placed with the multiplication symbols, it makes it seem more visually engaging to watch. Hell yeah! Finally, get to do some straight up damn. Oh boy, bro! Oh, son of a! That's actually a smart effect. Oh. Pretty smart because at least here he's uh, not gonna take a direct hit from Mila's other creature. So that's actually a pretty darn brilliant strategy there. And the worry thing is though. Oh yeah, shit. I don't think it's like that because I think Otis has the edge right now. And not just that, he can instantly destroy the Seven Roads. Magician costs 400 light points of damage and then Otis can probably summon another card. Or use a trap or a spell card too to cause even more damage. Unless he goes face down card again, prevent major amounts of damage or destruction. The fuck? Okay, that's pretty fucking broken up. I like it. Even the picture looked out of the shot. He, uh, he predicted it. I'm gonna be surprised if an emblem, Demon's Emblem has an effect that counteracts Yuga's uh, face down card. Or destroys it. Or nullifies it. Oh shit! You know, Yuga's plan wasn't bad itself, but it was a smart plan. It's just that Otis is a, is a lot smarter. Yo, he's not even giving our boy time to breathe, especially laying down two face down. Holy <laughs> fuck! Oh well, yeah! But just barely surviving that though. Oh yeah, this is gonna look good for the Goha Corporation if Vigo were to lose. Yeah, I'll talk about the stakes. Hmm.
Oh my. I like how this is going in our boil on. That's true, you gotta become rigid himself. And that's a good point too. I do like that because in life even even though you may improve something, it's always better to go after constant improvement and never to stay stagnant. So I do like that specific message in the series. This is why this episode's actually fucking good. It feels like it's an actually has a purpose. It involves characters that we know like Otis. Hell, that would just look like it fit in um, even um, Yugi Moto's deck just by its appearances. Feels like it's a relative of the Dark Magician. Hope it means it, okay, hope it has a badass effect. Damn, it's a shame it isn't an ability to summon it onto the field. <laughs> yes. Yo, that's a pretty damn baller strategy. Okay, what a cock block. <laughs> oh. God, oh man, that's pretty smart. Oh yeah, he did set two cards. <laughs> Damn it! Okay, what the fucking effect is that? Okay, the effect better be badass then. If it has that kind of cost. Yeah, that makes me the effect must actually make up for it then. Okay, now I noticed that Luke and Roman look super derpy, the drawings in the background. Jeez, our boy still has cards in his hand. <laughs> Talk about negativity. Wait, wait. Okay, but I thought for a second I was like, damn, some of these kids have low attention spats and not be watching the door that they were pumped up about. I just love how they all say the fucking obvious. <laughs> it's fucking adorable though, so I'll take it. Yo, I actually love that with a smile there. Smile like like the like a cool badass sensei there. Being proud of the students for passing them. That's actually nice. Feels like a figurative passing of the torch scene there. Well, provided that Yua can actually finish the deal and win the match. Yes! Get wrecked! But no, I'm not gonna call it just the B word. He's cool. Wait, is this series gonna go to motherfucking space eventually? <laughs> Holy shit! Yo, that would be badass. Is it to have fun? Is that? I mean, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be that. You could probably figure it out. <laughs> you 
finally we see him assert it for something. He'd probably make that Machine Calvary Dual Club a lot stronger. <laughs> The fuck? Who memorizes all those chapters and sections in the fucking rules, though? 667. <laughs> what? A lockout is not bad as it doesn't even give a shit about being arrested. Talk about being an absolute chad there. It's got the laugh of a. Um, y'all think y'all may have won the battle, but I'm gonna win the war eventually. That's. I mean, eh. You know what? Actually, yo, I actually wouldn't mind seeing a Yugo versus a Luke rematch. Actually. So I'm kind of happy they're in different teams because Yuga and Luke in the same team would feel fucking broken. Motherfucking broken. And plus, we can see Yuga hopefully home a bomb with the other Machine Cavalry Duel Club members. Oh shit. I thought they was going to end, but hey, you know what? I'll take this. Oh, I think I heard that was no enemies. Kind of sounds like what's... Oh shit. Never mind. I I guess it looks like Asana's doing something way more important than dueling, then. Hell yes! Da, da, da. Don't need it, da. Finally, a good Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s episode. It's felt like so long because the episode... Let's just be real. Episode 42 sucked! It sucked! Episode 43 is fucking good, so. If I had to rate this episode on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being abysmal, 5 being average, and 10 being exceptional, I'm definitely going to give this episode a 9 out of 10, because, for 1, at the very least here, the writing stuff actually used Otis, interestingly enough, in the narrative, because it was actually nice to get to see him actually inspire change in Yuga, to actually... Instead of just being a passive observer to change things through his actions, and I do like that. And he made up a good point too, even though yes, rush duels are fun, it's always best to constantly try to find a way of improving them so it doesn't stagnate, and I do love that. It feels realistic, because in life, you always have to embrace change. You shouldn't always reject change or avoid change. You should always try to go for it if it's improved something in the past. And that's the message I like in the series. Oh. All right, I can't wait to see why Ash does this in 15 seconds. Huh, I wonder why it's the Phoenix Dragon. It does look beautiful, I ain't gonna lie, though. Oh. I guess this sounds like a decent effect. Rashtul! <laughs> I have to fucking do that, too. Okay, why are some of them in fucking, um, in fucking prison bars? Ah, <laughs> uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, but that's why I, um, I do like the Yu-Gi-Oh series, though. They get overly fucking dramatic when it comes to shit like that. And you know what? I like the fuck out of that kind of shit. Well, anyways, all jokes aside, there's something else that I also liked about this episode, too, though. I do like the fact that for this episode, aside from it being Yu-Gi-Oh! Summons returning the form, I actually like how they don't straight up ignore Otis. It was nice to actually get to see him actually do something, unlike about 
fucking time. When was this dude going to show up? Because they gave him so much a buildup that it was kind of annoying that they didn't show him for quite a while. And finally, that's he's appeared. I'm like, good. Because here, at least we see him affect the narrative. And with him being captured, it does for sure know that he's going to definitely find a way of getting out. Because with him laughing, I'm like, yeah. There is no way he'd be just straight up laughing if he didn't have some kind of plan. So that's why I also like the episode narratively too. It made out as badass. I do like how it builds up Luke versus Yuga 2.0. Can't wait to see that. Thought that was actually really darn fucking cute. And we get to potentially see the other Mission Cavalry um, member, dual club members, 